Venus, being the second planet in the universe, seems to have caught the attention of astronauts yet again, and research has been carried out to know how well the planet can sustain a human. Are we about to relocate from Earth? And if so, what is the next big step for mankind? Stay with us until the end to unravel the facts behind our possible relocation to planet Venus, and how well life can be sustained there. Also don't forget to like and subscribe for more quality content just like this. Humans have always fantasized about the idea of colonizing a new planet, and Elon Musk still believes we will one day make Mars our home. So why has this become so important? This is because astronomers are full of the possibility that there are other things existing on other planets. They're working tirelessly on this, and there are tons of conspiracies that have suggested that life exists on other planets in our solar system. This and a number of other reasons explains why humans can colonize the planet Venus in the next few decades. Venus and Earth seem to move along very well with their planetary properties almost being the same, even of the same material. Mars has also said to be close to Earth, and over time has been on the hearts of many as a place for colonization. And it's still in the works. Venus however seems to be taking accolades, and we are wondering what is so special about this planet. With Venus having an atmosphere so dense that it makes living on the surface impossible, heat so intense it can melt lead, and sulfuric acid rain, I doubt anybody would be eager enough to move there. But over the years, we've found out that this place, which has oceans and continents, can actually be modified for habitation. Colonies can be built above the clouds, which would allow for a safe enough living space for humans. With these discoveries, it is of little wonder that the fiction writers have always written about Venus being colonized. They seem to have peeked into the future of the human race. One particular novel writer, Paul Anderson, extensively wrote about how Venus can be terraformed through the right engineering. Methods have been proposed on how Venus can be colonized, which is the emphasis on ecological engineering, also known as terraforming. This would be to make the planet inhabitable. However, there have also been suggestions as to how human beings could live there without altering the environment substantially. This is just like what was suggested by Soviet scientists in Inner Solar System, Prospective Energy and Material Resources, which said that humans could colonize the planet Venus's atmosphere rather than attempting to live in its hostile environment. With different types of research still going on, Jeffrey A. Landis, a NASA scientist, proposed that cities could be built above Venus clouds, at an altitude of 50 kilometers above its surface. This concept of a human being living 50 kilometers above its surface would lead to a drop in the degree of temperature, making its habitation more conducive. The pressure also drops. This he mentioned would keep humans or any living thing safe from its harsh environment. In his paper named Colonization of Venus, he further mentioned, the atmosphere of Venus is the most Earth-like environment, other than Earth itself, in the solar system. It is proposed here that in the near term, human exploration of Venus could take place from aerostat vehicles in the atmosphere, and that in the long term, Permanent settlements could be made in the form of cities designed to float about 50 kilometers in altitude in the atmosphere of Mars. Venus as a planet. The habitats in Venus consist of aerostats filled with breathable air of a 21 to 79 oxygen nitrogen mix. This is based on the idea that air would be lifting gas in the dense carbon dioxide atmosphere, possessing over 60% of the lifting power that helium has on Earth. And at that altitude, well, that altitude of 50 kilometers above the surface, the environment has a pressure of approximately 100,000 PA, which is slightly less than Earth's at sea level. The temperatures also range from 0 to 50 degrees centigrade, 32 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, and protection against cosmic radiation would be provided by the atmosphere above, with a shielding mass equivalent to Earth's. All of these will provide initial living spaces for colonists, and would act as terraformers, gradually converting Venus' atmosphere into something more habitable so the colonists could migrate to the surface. One way to do this would be to use these very cities as solar shades, since their presence in the clouds would prevent solar radiation from reaching the surface. This would work particularly well if the floating cities were made of low albedo materials. Alternatively, reflective balloons or sheets of carbon nanotubes or graphene will be deployed. This offers the advance of in-situ resource allocation, since atmospheric reflectors could be built using locally sourced carbon. Does colonizing Venus hold any benefits? Ranging from all the possibilities that Venus can be colonized, there are also accompanying benefits to this. 
one of which is the fact that Venus is the closest planet to Earth. This however means that less time, money and energy is exerted in the mission, compared to other planets like Neptune or even Mars, which is slightly further. Imagine just having to stroll to that favourite bar of yours, it's like what our astronomers think of when going to Venus. Also, astronauts are more prone to move through the path of harmful radiation when going to Mars than Venus. This is a result of the planet Venus' greater proximity as well as its induced magnetosphere, which arises from the interaction of its thick atmosphere with the solar wind. Mars as a planet lacks all these protections. Still, in the line of protection of the human body, floating in Venus's atmosphere holds less risk of explosive decompression. Why? Well, it's because there is little to no significant change in pressure between the inside and outside of the habitats, so if for any reason there is some damage to the plane, there's less risk and repairs can easily be done. One spectacular benefit is that humans do not need to put on pressurized suits, as they would have otherwise done on Mars or other planets. This saves cost and necessities in prepping for the mission. Although oxygen masks would still be needed, and they need to be protected against the acidic rain, it's still a slightly conducive environment for a man to live in. Without leaving one major fact behind after talking about the closeness to Earth, Venus is also close in size and mass, resulting in a surface gravity of 0.904 g. This would be much easier to adapt to. This can largely be compared to the gravity of the Moon, Mercury or Mars. In addition, a settlement there would have access to abundant materials, with which to grow food and manufacture materials. Since Venus' atmosphere is made mostly out of carbon dioxide, nitrogen and sulfur dioxide, these could be sequestered to create fertilizers and other chemical compounds. The Harsh Reality Humanly speaking, we are aware that with every discovery found comes along with challenges or possible setbacks. Venus is no exception likewise, one of which is that although the health issues accompanying going to Venus seem to be minimal compared to others, there still would be a need for protective shielding in the colony, crews and the airships, and they'd all need protection. This is as a result of the sulfuric rain which would come into play when floating colonies are removed from the extreme heat and pressure of the surface. Another setback would be experienced in the going back and forth of astronauts, and the ship to transport water. Water is virtually non-existent on Venus, and the composition of the atmosphere would not allow for synthetic production until it can be produced there. This would mean transporting hydrogen gas to create water from the atmosphere, and so extremely strict recycling protocols would need to be introduced. And this however would require a heavy investment to transport the necessary material. And not to forget the robot workers which would be needed to build a single floating colony in Venus would cost millions of dollars. However, before assuming that Venus is too small to contain the human race, know that the planet Venus has enough space to accommodate billions, and if we do eventually move there, we would have longer days and nights compared to here on Earth. This is because Venus rotates once every 243 Earth days. It is also the only planet to rotate clockwise, meaning it has an extremely slow sunset that would happen in the west and sunrise in the east. But even with all these challenges, Venus is still called Earth's sister. Of course, none of this will be happening anytime soon. While this colony would work in theory, we still need to learn a lot more about Venus. Mars takes up much of the shine in our interplanetary exploration, while most missions to Venus were made decades ago by Soviet probes. NASA does have a plan for a 30-day crewed mission to Venus called the High Altitude Venus Operational Concept, but this project is sadly inactive. As we gear up to establish colonies on the Moon and on Mars however, hopefully we keep our sister planet in mind. Thank you for watching another one of our videos. While you are here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there!